Hi there. For mechanics one, I wanted to go through some basics of statics and dynamics, and I'm going to do it through three different force diagrams and uh, types of situations that you might face. There's also a second video if you want to carry on and do some slightly more complex ones. So for those mechanics students amongst you, I hope this is useful. Um, what I always advise my students to do is do a force diagram and a component diagram. So I'm going to do the same here for this situation. Uh, first of all, for my force diagram, I want to identify all the forces and for the moment I'm going to focus on this weight here hanging off two uh, light inextensible strings, one at 30 degrees, one at 60 degrees to the horizontal. So let's have a look at how that works out for a force diagram. So the forces are the tension in the string going to A and the tension in the string going to B. There's also the weight of whatever C is, which will be its mass times the acceleration due to gravity. What we also need to add in is the angles that it makes with the horizontal. And in this case, we've got, because of alternate angles, that one will be 30 degrees and that one will be 60 degrees. So there's my force diagram. Uh, I could equally do a force diagram for where it connects at B and where it connects at A. Um, and I'll just do that one on the diagram here where you'd have that tension, which I've called TB before, and then there'd be a reaction force uh, of where it connects to the wall. And similarly here, there'd be a tension at A and a reaction from the wall. Now, I'm going to first of all just focus on C though. So there's my force diagram, uh, and in order to find a component diagram, I need to resolve any forces that aren't in the two direction I want to choose. So I'm going to resolve uh, horizontally and vertically. So my two tensions are not pointing that direction at the moment, so I need to resolve them. Uh, the way I always think of it is I've got this tension here and I want to find the horizontal component uh, and because it goes through the angle that I've identified its cos and it works in my head uh, and obviously it comes from Sokotoa because I'm finding the adjacent side so I'm going to be using cos. Now that's the horizontal component of the tension going to A There'll also be a vertical component, which is like that. Uh, but just if you can see it in the triangle, it's the opposite side to the 30. So if I just put that in, it's going to be the tension times sine of 30 degrees. And that's our tension in A resolved. Uh, for B, similarly, we're going to have the tension in B, and it's going to be sine of 60. And this one's going to be the tension in B cos 60. Because I'm going through the angle, it's going to be cos horizontally, away from the angle sine. OK, and finally, we just put our mg in, because that's already in the direction we want it to be. What this allows me to do now is whether it's a statics question or a dynamics question, this one's static, it's not going anywhere. Um, so, but I still always use F equals MA. So vertically, resolving vertically, all the forces up minus all the forces down. If it's a static situation, if it's in equilibrium, then it'd be equal to mass times an acceleration of zero, and that's why it's equal to zero. Horizontally, assuming again it's also in equilibrium, then it doesn't matter which way you pick as your positive, as long as you stick with it. So all the forces right minus all the forces left equals zero. 
and that should allow you to do any solving that you need to do at the moment if we were given the mass you've got two unknowns and two equations so what we're looking at is how you can use a diagram like this and the basics to get you through the majority of the question about using a have a go for this one uh, what I like to do with this force here is it's drawn pushing it but it is perfectly legitimate to have it as a force pulling and for our force diagram that tends to make it a bit more familiar so if we've got our particle sitting on a slope uh, in this case the slope we're going to assume is rough um, so it's going to be a friction there we go I've drawn my X as if it were pulling the shape rather than pushing it there's going to be the mass of the particle there's going to be the reaction which is always at a right angle to the plane and then if this force is trying to push it up there would be a friction down and I've written my friction as mu the coefficient of friction times the reaction force and there's my force diagram got to put my angles on and that will be 30 degrees and then perpendicular to the slope we've got this angle in here which will also be 30 degrees there's my force diagram and now I'm going to do my component diagram now I want to resolve along the slope and perpendicular to the slope makes it slightly easier to solve so I can leave R where it is because that's already in the direction I want and similarly the friction mu times r is in the direction that I want however I'm going to need to resolve mg and x so x going through the angle means we've got x cos 30 going up the slope and away from the angle x sine 30 perpendicular to the slope for my mg going through the angle mg cos 30 going away from the angle mg sin 30 and once again I can um, use f equals ma and say everything up the slope minus everything down the slope If it is in equilibrium, it would be equal to zero. And if it wasn't, if it was starting to go down the slope, it was starting to move up the slope, it would be equal to ma. So just think about, is it an acceleration or not? And then that defines what you call this. Uh, so that's parallel to the slope and perpendicular to the slope. We've got um, everything away from the slope, is I'm going to call my positive, minus everything going into the slope. and the particle isn't going into the slope or jumping off it so in this case the acceleration will be zero so it'll be equal to zero and then you set up your two equations and you're in a pretty strong position to solve any problems they throw at you with this question final example for this video is again a slope uh, this one is of particular interest because it's not uncommon for you to be given alpha and told that tan of alpha is three quarters now I've seen too many students then do in, uh, inverse tan or if you're more proficient arc tan of three quarters to find out alpha and there's no need to do that if tan of an angle is three quarters then you just need to think of it like a little right angle triangle that means that the ratio of the opposite to the adjacent is three over four and if that's the case 4 squared plus 3 squared and then square rooted will give you 5 and that means that cos alpha will be the adjacent over the hypotenuse and sine alpha is the opposite over the hypotenuse and that allows you to substitute in cos and sine alpha into your equations as 4 thirds and 3 uh, 4 fifths and 3 fifths and so let's have a look how that works with our force diagram so the force diagram is going to have uh, 30 newtons 
120 newtons, a reaction force, and if you find that this one is rough as well, then we're going to have a reaction um, a friction down the slope. Uh, resolving those forces for our component diagram, very similar to the previous one. So there's our component diagram. Um, because of the previous example, I've pushed through um, and assumed that we're relatively happy with the position of these angles. The reason I pushed through is I want to show you this. Um, when we put our equations together now for this one, we've got, if we go first of all along the slope, then everything up the slope now for this one, I would write 30 cos alpha, but because I've got a value for cos alpha, I can do it times four fifths, minus everything down the slope. And for again, for this one, instead of sine alpha, I can put in three fifths, and that will be equal to the mass times the acceleration. If it's not moving, the acceleration will be zero. And perpendicular to the slope, everything going away from the slope, minus everything going into it. And again, I can use my values for sine alpha and cos alpha. And this one isn't going into the slope or out of the slope. So acceleration in that direction is zero. And again, that just helps you set up your equations so you can get the questions right. So I've just summarized a few key things to get you started on statics and dynamics questions for M1 and if you want to do it right make sure you've got a force diagram and a component diagram on every question similar to these. Best of luck!